Ladies and gentlemen, this particular story came out um, a little while ago, not too long ago, um, but when it first came out, we only had part of the story because it's still kind of a developing story, but it gets crazy. This story comes out of a place called North Carolina, right? Where the baby is from. Yes, the baby. And while we're talking about the baby, we're going to be talking about the babies that these people, these individuals continue to keep having for the benefits that they can collect off of these kids. And we call that here, hashtag babies for benefits. Because in my humble opinion, I believe that there are a lot of people and too many people who only have children for the benefits that they can collect from those children. That's a hashtag that we created here. That's a thought process that I want people to start thinking about because I want people to value their children for more than just the thing. Matter of fact, we ought to be given our children. Why do we take from our children at all? That I don't understand. I really don't. It seems like we should be giving more and receiving very little from our children. That's the way we're supposed to build a legacy, build strong children. The baby that you see on my screen right here went through something that was so horrendous. I kind of have a little bit of an issue trying to talk about it because I got a little bit worked up here in the details. So I know you guys might also. But let me say this, some of these details are not going to sit well with your sensibilities. So if you can't handle that, I understand that this might not be the channel for you. If you only came to hear the news, then this might not be the channel for you. Go to the news station. This ain't the news. I'm DJ Just J with the stupid beard braid that loves babies, okay? I love children and my message and my goal is to try to spread more awareness for babies like this who don't have a voice, who can't speak for themselves, nor can they defend themselves. And you have to hear this precious princess story. A missing four-year-old girl, at the time she was missing, her remains were found buried in the backyard of a home in North Charlotte, Carolina, last week, according to police. So let me explain something to you guys. And yes, that wonderful picture right there. Let me explain something. I think it's a real shame and it makes it like, it's almost like adding salt to a wound. Whenever you're talking about children are missing, we're trying to find these children and we're putting on these massive searches. We're going out searching woods. We're going out searching la landfills. We're going and searching people's homes and invading their privacy and doing all of this stuff to find children, to find children that have been taken advantage of by the ones who were caretaking for them. In this case, it was the biological mother, but there's also some implications for the lady on the left-hand side, okay? These people know what happened to this girl, but yet they put it out there, they put this big fake story out there, talking about, oh, we don't know, like the child has been abducted, we don't know what the baby is. You hear these stories happen so often talking about abductions, but this is not what this is and it's not what it is in a lot of cases. The child who has been identified, let me get this girl off my screen, but she's too full of herself, all right? Let me get the baby back up on the screen if I can. This angel, her name is Magellic Jelly Young. Jelly is her nickname. It's spelled J-E-L-L-I-E. -L -L -E. So for those who want to say justice for jelly, that should be very easy for us to be able to spread that message. So let's put that hashtag in the chat. Hashtag justice for jelly. J-E-L-L-I-E. -L -L -E. Majelic is spelled M-I-G-E-L-L-I-C. One of those unique names, but this baby did not choose her name. Her mother gave her that name. Magellic Young was found outside of a home on Braden Drive near Charlotte's Firestone Park. Several people came forward voluntarily to be interviewed by detectives, including the child's mother, Malika Diane Bennett. Let me get her face on the screen. This is Malika Diane Bennett. Shortly thereafter, she was arrested and charged with felony child abuse, inflicting physical injury and felony concealing a death and first degree murder. 
Did y'all hear all of those charges? Do I need to read them again? The mother came out voluntarily to do an interview. You want to know why? Do you want to know why I have this shirt on? Because it is in my humble opinion that they probably came out and said somebody abducted the baby because I didn't see the interview. They probably came out and said somebody abducted the baby, stole the baby, and we need a GoFundMe to raise some money to find this baby. You guys want to know why I say that? I think I took a screenshot of it. Let me see if I can show you guys the now closed GoFundMe for those who think that DJ Just J is so wrong for always harping on these GoFundMes. I've told y'all, GoFundMe should be for life, not for death. Life insurance is for death, all right? If you can't afford a, if you can't afford a life, uh, afford life insurance, then you shouldn't be a parent. This is the GoFundMe, Majelic Young, started by Quisha Davis, who was organizing on behalf of Chikimia Young. I don't know who the hell that is, nor do I give a crap, but there was a GoFundMe that was opened. As you guys can see there, it was opened, it was closed. So for those who think that I'm just making this stuff up just because I might feel a certain type of way, that's actually not true. I did have proof of that, okay? She was charged with felony child abuse, inflicting physical injury, felony concealing a death, and first degree murder, which can get life in, which can get you life in prison, and that could get you the ultimate penalty under law, the death penalty. Thursday, police announced that a second person, not just the mom, go figure, huh? A second person was charged. Do you guys know who the second person who was charged in this case? That's the mom. This is her mom, AKA the grandmother. We take a drink of some of this Fiji water, best water on the planet. Got my brain moving real nice and right today. The grandmother has been arrested and charged. This is 2021. This is supposed to be the revolution. Let's talk about this. I told you, I'm gonna say some stuff that's gonna piss you off. Bear with me. This is supposed to be the revolution of supporting women. Believe all women, right? Y'all have y'all ever heard anybody use that terminology? I've heard Tommy talk about it many times. Shout out to my brother Tommy. Believe all women is actually a hashtag that they tried to create in order to make it seem like when when a woman comes out and says something, believe her, don't question her. She's a woman, which that that definitely doesn't qualify as equality in this world. But we know they don't want equality; they want superiority. It's not all, but let's move past that point. If we are supposed to believe all in all situations, then why is it that you have people hiding their crimes, lying about their crimes and getting paid to do it? Does that not sound like babies for benefits to you? This woman is 53 year old Tammy Moffitt, the grandmother, and she was charged in this case. Moffitt was interviewed and charged with concealing a death and accessory after the fact murder. Grandma, let me tell you how really disgusting this is. Grandmothers are thought to be these revered individuals. You just think of grandma like you think of certain things. You think of grandma loves me unconditionally. You think of grandma going to give me some candy. You think grandma going to say nice things about you, right? You think about grandma's cooking. I know I do, right? Matter of fact, my mother's, my mother's mom and my dad's mom, excellent cooks. They both from the old school. I'm older, so I had... Clearly, I had older grandmothers. Excellent cooks. You think about that type of stuff when you think of a grandmother. One thing you do not think of is somebody who is going to help hide your murder. Your mother kills you and grandma is going to help cover it up. That is one thing that nobody on earth would ever associate their grandmother with. Am I lying? 
Am I telling the truth about that? Do any of you disagree with what I just said? Because I think what I'm saying is I'm speaking facts. This is a talk show. Why people come here to hear the news is beyond me. These stories are to raise awareness. I continue to keep saying that. This ain't the damn news. This is real life. This is a reality. And this is stuff that we can stop right now. If you see something, you can say something. We need to report it and have stronger laws against the murder and abuse of children. There's a reason that I say that. Because we haven't gotten to this part yet, but the mother actually has a history with CPS. How many of y'all are surprised? I'm going to say that again. She has a history. Not only does she have a big, nasty chest tattoo, neck tattoo, face tattoos, and y'all know how I feel about that. If the shoe fits, wear it. I think people that get face and neck tattoos have something mentally wrong with them and they might not should be around children. It don't mean all people. It ain't all faith. It don't, all I'm saying is it just makes you wonder. That's it. You don't like what I got to say about that? It's just my personal opinion. She has a history with CPS. Anybody surprised by that? So her and her mom were arrested for the mom murdering the baby, concealing the death, and grandma helping her. Like, why would you help her? She's, she's already going up the river. Why would you throw your 53-year-old life away for her stupid choices? I don't, I don't understand this. I really don't. Neighbors told the news that Tammy Moffitt is the child's grandmother. So I had that right. A friend of Moffitt told the news that she is in shock over the arrest. They said, I never would have thought of Tammy, but you know what people are going to do. But you know, oh, but you never know what people are going to do. All people react different. She says Bennett has at least eight kids. Let me read that a little bit slower. Let me make sure my, does my volume work? Can y'all hear me? I know we're live right now. If y'all would do me a favor and please click the thumbs up if you haven't already done so. I want to know what you guys' questions are. Do y'all have any questions for me while we're live? We can talk about this. Let me make sure y'all can hear my voice. Let me read that a little bit slower. Nice and clear. Good deal. So since we're live, guys, we need to be at least at 400 thumbs up. We're doing really good. But if we can, let's bring a few more people in to click that thumbs up. Does anybody have an issue with what I've said so far? Yes, you guys heard me correctly. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. Eight. I'm going to do my best to not curse as much because I like my monetization on this channel. I would prefer to keep it on this channel. But let me ask a vital question. Why on God's green earth would any human being, especially knowing that the mortality rate for our women in America is extremely high. Do you guys know what the mortality rate is? Do you understand that concept? For those who don't, I'll quickly explain it. And again, I got this talking point from Tommy. Shout out to my brother. Look it up if you don't believe it. That means that there is a high probability that a woman can give birth in America and die in childbirth. I actually know a few of my friends, a few of my lady friends that might be out there listening right now that actually did die giving birth and they had to revive them from having children. Came that close to being clinically dead just from giving birth. And in America, that number is extremely high. High probability, you have a baby, no matter what age, you could die giving birth, which will also segue me into the next story. If y'all heard about that woman, the, not even a woman, as a kid. The 14-year-old girl that dropped her baby off in the restaurant, we'll get to that in a little bit. She has at least eight kids. 
Let's take a pause for the cause right there. Good God. How do you not know how many children came out? I could understand because men can have sex with multiple women and have children spread out all at one time. A man can do that. That's how our bodies are set up. We can procreate that way. Most women are going to be limited how many children they can have at one time. A man can go out and go produce eight children at one time. Can a woman do that? Sure, you could try. Not so, you could try, but how likely is that to be the case? Especially when we talk about the mortality rate, a lot of women are dying give, giving birth to just one kid. Why in the hell would you ever have eight children? Oh yeah, I know the answer to that. The answer is right here on this shirt. Can y'all read that? Babies for benefits. She only had these children for the benefits that she could collect from these children. That's why I had a shirt on. There is absolutely no reason this woman had these children outside of what she could have gained from having those children. Let's move on. Now, according to the arrest warrant, uh, warrant, police say that Bennett inflicted serious bodily injury on baby jelly, causing black eyes, bruises, and swelling. An arrest warrant for child abuse in March of 2020 says that she left another child alone for more than 24 hours. Let's talk about that picture for a moment. Because I want to th talk about these thirst traps. And this actually goes for me too. So I don't want y'all to think that this doesn't apply to me. Because it absolutely does. Because men, usually, including myself, will let the little head outthink the big head. Right? Guys are stupid. Just like me. We let the little head outthink the big head. We see a pretty face and a fat ass and we just think, oh yeah, we should run up in that, right? You look at this. This woman is perpetually pregnant. That's the only way I could describe this. She's perpetually pregnant. I don't even see her age on here. I'll look up her, her age. She looked like she's like in her 30s, maybe. For her to have eight kids, that means she had to constantly, every year, keep having kids. Absolutely disgusting. How many baby daddies do you think she has? For y'all nasty men out there that would just stick y'all thing and anything, knowing that this woman is having that, um, that much unprotected sex, how many STDs are y'all nasty dudes out there spreading around out there in North Carolina? Huh? The reason I can say that, eight kids, potentially multiple baby daddies, there's a high probability that there could be six to eight different baby daddies that she's had sex with unprotected, meaning dudes are choosing to sleep with her unprotected and none of them are with her. Huh? Disgusting. You look at that picture and most guys, include myself, would at least go say something to her. We go try to holler. The tattoos would immediately throw me off. And if she has any type of hood dialect, I'm pretty sure I'm like, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. I'm cool. I'm a judge of book by its cover. I don't give a damn if y'all don't because I do. I like my health and my wealth. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm going I'm to judge a damn book by its cover, right? Anyway. She has had CPS involved. She left a child in March of 2020 alone for more than 24 hours. There's more. Court records also show that in January of 2011, she was arrested for misdemeanor child abuse and pled guilty. 
But do y'all think they took away all of her kids and made it to where she couldn't be a parent anymore? No, why would they do that? She's a mom. Doesn't she deserve to have her kids? Isn't she infallible? She can have her kids no matter what she does. You can murder your kids, go to jail, get out of jail. As long as you can produce a kid, you can just have another one, right? Eight kids, I'm sure she don't give a crap. They said, I hope they can, they can lay down and sleep at night because I couldn't. Her friend said, if it was mine, I couldn't do it. A memorial has been placed in the spot where the baby was found. Let me see if I have that picture, which is that spot right there. That's, the, that's that baby's final resting place. I could skip some of this. Let me go ahead and move on. Charlotte Mecklenburg police say that the child was last seen at her mother's home for a visit in September. For a visit in September. Since then, they received reports that the little girl hasn't been seen for some time. So she might not even have had custody of this little girl. It said, and I quote, the child was last seen at her mother's home for a visit in September. <sighs> Officers contacted Missing Persons Unit. Very quickly, they become concerned foul play may have been involved, said CMPD Lieutenant Stephen Fishback. Certainly, that's, that's concerning when no one can account for the child at that time. Bennett, the girl's mother, has also, ha uh, also has three pending misdemeanor child abuse charges from February of 2020, according to a search of public records. The mom is 31 years old. Thank y'all for looking that up for me. I could have found it. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't look it up. Eight children at age 31. Eight children at age 31. Just. Whew. She has three pending misdemeanor child abuse charges from last year. But she continues to get to be around children. How in the hell is that possible? How does North Carolina mess that up so bad? This is what I'm talking about when we're talking about the laws and what we can vote for and what we ask for. This is the type of thing where we absolutely have to make it of vital importance to make sure that people who are charged or suspected of child abuse should not be allowed to be around children. Protect the children first until they can prove themselves innocent. The investigation and arrest of Bennett was a collaborative effort by detectives with CMPD's Homicide Unit, Missing Persons Unit, Crimes Against Children, and Crime Scene Search. It was a real full court press to find where this little girl, uh, where, where she was, excuse me. A group of Jelly's loved ones uh, gathered outside of Mecklenburg County Courthouse Monday, demanding that Bennett is kept in jail with no bond. Family members at the courthouse said Jelly returned to live with her mother in the fall and that was the last time that they saw the girl. Three pending charges. And they say that the baby returned to live with her mother in the fall. Why? It's not. Well, here's the thing. People say that CPS failed, CPS needs to do better. No, this is a failure of the biological mother and biological father. Can we, can we post that in the chat, please? This is a failure directly on the biological mother and biological father. Let me tell y'all something. After the first kid, the second man didn't have to go sleep with this woman and provide his seed. 
after the second baby, the third man didn't have to go provide his seed to make a baby. After the third baby, the fourth man didn't go have to provide his seed, so on and so forth. After the fourth baby, the fifth man didn't have to go sleep with her unprotected. The sixth man didn't have to go sleep with her unprotected. The seventh man didn't have to go sleep with her unprotected. The eighth man did not have to go sleep with her unprotected. At some point, when are we going to point the finger back at me and say, you know what? We could stop all of this. We know that we have a lot of women who are unstable. It's not all. It's too effing many. But guess what? If you don't provide them the seed, they can't produce from their soil. As men, we got to start vetting better than that. I know condoms aren't 100%, but abstinence, abstinence is. Just because this girl, look, I'm going to tell, tell y'all something. Y'all know how many dudes this woman that got trapped on just by that picture alone? That's why she posted that picture, because that's all niggas see. That's it. Fat ass, cute face, light skin. That's all I need to know. Let me, let me provide my seed, my legacy in between your legs. And potentially ruin myself by way of STDs and child support. That's a failure on men. The problem is choice. The problem is choice. Women are making bad choices and so are men. Women have been given a shit ton of stupid ass options. Have they not? Too many of them are choosing these stupid options. If men know that women have these options and they're saying, you know what? We're not going to shun it. We're actually going to accept those options. Let's accept food stamps. Let's accept Section 8. Let's accept car vouchers. Let's accept child support. Run, running and dragging a man through the mud for no freaking damn reason. Talking about we don't need nothing. But yet we're going to act like we need something by taking this man's lifeblood, his paycheck. Even though we're talking about we don't need him. Even though we're taking what he needs and need. Huh? We're going to talk that shit, but we don't live by it. And if men know that that's what women are doing, then why are men sleeping with those type of women? It's a two-way street, and here we hold everybody accountable. Let me give you guys the fair usage, and we'll get back to that STD talk here in a minute. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. We're going to come up with a new hashtag. I can't say it because I'm going to get flagged. <laughs> but let's move on with our news videos. First tonight at 11, a new arrest in a case that CMPD calls deeply disturbing. The grandmother of a four-year-old girl who was found buried in her backyard, now charged with playing a role in the crime. The child's mother is already facing murder charges for her daughter's death. And WCNC Charlotte's Hunter Signs spoke to those close with the family. And Hunter, these folks say this is just another stunning twist in this case. Yeah, a stunning twist in this tragedy that has really struck a nerve here in this community. Neighbors tell me that that grandmother visit this home often, checking in on her daughter and her grandkids. But when investigators descended on this home and found that gruesome discovery, the grandmother was nowhere to be found. As innocent as they come. Balloons, stuffed animals, and flowers mark the home and the backyard where four-year-old Majelic Young's body was found. Loved to play and she was just bright. Police say she was buried in this backyard. They say she'd been dead since September of last year, finally found on Friday. It is shocking uh, on, on so many levels. Corey Thomas lives across the street. He says Majelic's grandmother, Tammy Moffitt, was at this house often, but not when investigators made their discovery. Trouble to that degree, you know, family would be involved, you know, so didn't see grandma. 
Police arrested her Wednesday, charging her with concealing a death and accessory after the murder. They don't make grandmothers like they used to, apparently. Janisha Harris. I 100% agree with her. Let me rewind that. Cause she probably from the old school like I am. I want to hear her voice again. I love that she said that. Let me let, let me let y'all hear that again. One more again, Grandma. Wednesday charging her with concealing a death and accessory after the murder. They don't make grandmothers like they used to. Thank you for saying that. I don't know where you get these type of grandmothers from. Like I just I would have never thought this was something that would happen. Wednesday charging her with concealing a death and accessory after the murder. They don't make grandmothers like they used to, apparently. Janisha Harrison is with Mothers of Murdered Offspring. That's the angers. So many. She says Majelic's father spent months searching for his daughter and is now shattered. Family members say her mother, Malika Bennett, was pregnant when detectives say she killed Majelic and when she buried her. These type of situations have to stop. They have to stop. And Mothers of Murdered Offspring will be holding a vigil tomorrow at 7 o'clock at Nevins Community Park. The mother in this case, Malika Bennett, has been charged with first degree murder. Let's get to the uh, next video. I'm going to try to skip through some of these if they're giving us repeat information, but I got a couple of these before I give y'all my closing thoughts. Again, if y'all are watching, we are live right now, so I'm looking to the camera and tell you guys, if y'all would share the stream, click that thumbs up. It'll let more people know that we're live. So if we can get to about 600 thumbs up, that will help us out quite a bit while we're talking about this story. So what we're trying to do is spread awareness, okay? Miss June Bennett is posting links out there, said if you see something, say something. The National Child Abuse Hotline is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It doesn't mean that when you utilize these phone numbers that it's going to save a child, but it does increase the likelihood that if you think something's wrong, we'd rather you be wrong and save a life than to not say anything and lose a life. Okay? All right, let's keep going. Right now at five, a second person now charged in the death of a four-year-old girl found buried in a Charlotte backyard. And now we know the woman facing charges is the little girl's grandmother. Tammy Moffitt is charged with concealing a death and accessory after the fact. Majelic Young's body was found buried in the backyard of her mother's home back on. Thank you for saying that. You said she had to be doing it for the benefits. I'm telling you, that's why I have this shirt on. There, what, what else would be the motive? Why, do, why else would you help your daughter cover up a murder? Why would you do that? That makes absolutely no sense at all. May 21st, Fox 46's Annie Satowski joins us live in Charlotte with what the little girl's family is saying about this new development. Annie? She was pregnant. Yeah, Lindsay, we are- Oh God. She was pregnant when she killed that girl? Probably her ninth kid. Oh my goodness. Shout out to my to my people in the chat. Mookie just said that she was pregnant when she killed the little girl, probably her ninth child. That is absolutely insane. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What 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 can you say about that? Why else would you be having that many kids? Like, why? And you know what? And I'm gonna tell y'all, because I want y'all to notice. Let me let me hit this record button again. I want y'all to also notice something that she she seems to pick and choose which children she abuses. To me, that sounds like different baby dads in order to punish the baby dads. Because I don't think she gives a crap about these kids at all. They are literally just, just social security numbers to her that she can collect benefits off of. This sounds like she was trying to punish one of the fathers or over the course of time, punish the fathers. Why else would you do this to the kids? Just a couple streets up from that home where police recovered the body, as you mentioned, of four-year-old Majelic Young, and that was less than a week ago. Earlier today, we spoke with Majelic's aunt, and they said while they are relieved about this second arrest, no amount of charges will bring their niece back. That is true. I'm going to let y'all hear this interview. If y'all have not subscribed to my channel, please make sure y'all subscribe so that when, when we do go live, we, we got a lot to do this week. 
because I ha I actually have to be in Missouri. I forgot to tell y'all this, but I'm actually going to be going to camp with my daughter for a whole week. And we're actually going to be at a, um, I'll tell y'all about it at the end, but it's going to be really, really nice. Really nice. But if y'all would, if y'all haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We got a lot more to talk about this week, okay? So make sure y'all hit that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up. An ever-growing memorial outside the home where police recovered the body of four-year-old Majelic Young, buried in the backyard. Oh, we still take balloons and beers and her favorite things. Sabrina Baker, one of Majelic's aunts who didn't want to show her face on camera, says she's grateful for another arrest. It's never enough justice, to really be honest because we can't get her back. Thursday, police charged Tammy Moffitt, Majelic's grandmother, with concealing a death and accessory after the fact, believed to have helped the little girl's mother, Malika Bennett, dispose of her body. Bennett's already been charged with first degree murder. A baby? How can you be sleep? They're not human. Baker says Majelic was only supposed to visit her mom for a weekend back in August. That turned into nine months without seeing her. She was with the grandmother. She's with other family members. Um, don't worry about it. They say this never should have happened. She was only supposed to be there for a weekend. My God, man. Wow. She was only supposed to be there for a weekend. Charges will bring their niece back. An ever-growing memorial outside the home where police recovered the body of four-year-old Majelic Young, buried in the backyard. Oh. This baby was only supposed to be there for a weekend. If this woman is that dangerous and has that many charges standing against her, why would, who, first of all, who had custody of the baby? Was it the grandmother? I don't know who had legal custody. I'm not sure if I can actually look that up and divulge that information legally because I don't want to get in legal trouble for divulging that information if I'm not supposed to, if it'll harm the integrity of the case. But who had custody? Whoever had custody should also be charged. Like there's no reason. Three pending charges, old charges, she pled guilty to one of them. And you go let this little girl go stay with her? Why? We still take balloons and beers and her favorite things. Sabrina Baker, one of Majelic's aunts who didn't want to show her face on camera, says she's grateful for another arrest. It's never enough justice, to really be honest, because we can't get her back. Thursday, police charged Tammy Moffitt, Majelic's grandmother, with concealing a death and accessory after the fact, believed to have helped the little girl's mother, Malika Bennett, dispose of her body. Bennett's already been charged with first degree murder. A baby? How can you just sleep? They're not human. Baker says Majelic was only supposed to visit her mom for a weekend back in August. That turned into nine months without seeing her. How, Sway? How? A weekend turns into nine months that this girl has disappeared. Keep in mind, guys, this is May the 31st, and we're just now hearing about this when this little girl was only supposed to be gone for one weekend at a max of three days and doesn't, we, we hear nothing for nine months? That makes me want to punch this screen. An accessory after the fact, believed to have helped the little girl's mother, Malika Bennett, dispose of her body. Bennett's already been charged with first degree murder. A baby? How can you just sleep? They're not human. Baker says Majelic was only supposed to visit her mom for a weekend back in August. That turned into nine months without seeing her. She was with the grandmother, she's with other family members. Um, don't worry about it. They say this never should have happened. I just want everybody to remember her as that um the beautiful angel that we all know and love baker says so many things aren't adding up and thinks more people saw or heard something when majelic was alive hoping they come forward i just feel like anyone that was involved in that household that knew what was going on should be held accountable 
and family members describe Majelic as a happy and bright little girl, and that's really how they want people to remember her. Family is holding a candlelight vigil starting at 7.30 tomorrow night, and anyone is welcome to attend and celebrate that little girl's life. We have all those details on fox46.com. In Charlotte tonight, Andy Sitowski, Fox 46. Yeah, the newest development in an ongoing investigation still. And we also have some new details tonight on a... Right now, reports of a child. Some of these, we're going we're gonna to skip some of these videos. We're going to get to, like, our last couple, because some of these are giving us information we already know now. Found buried behind a Charlotte home. Memorial is growing in that... People have been coming by... Reasons. First off, mainly what we've been able to get from neighbors here on scene, but also we did reach out to CMPD ourselves as far as that information is concerned, and they did not deny it when we asked them directly about this. Now, let's show you some of the uh, scene from a little bit earlier this afternoon. We can tell you what we found here when we got out here. This is a look at how it was before the sun went down. Neighbors and others coming by with balloons, again, teddy bears, candles, as word has gotten out about what had been going on here. Essentially, all day police had been here, and once they left, that's when the neighbors started arriving. More people have been coming. I had a chance to speak with a social worker and a neighbor about why they came by. I just want to be here with you. Say you love my channel. Thank you very much for saying that. You said there are so many questions. Drea, yes. Matter of fact, I, I wonder if I know that's the same Drea I know. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's so many questions. Like you'd have to ask these questions. Like how many of the children did she have custody of? Who had custody of the children? Why did they allow her to even see or visit the children if she has pending cases and an actual guilty uh, plea? She pled guilty to one of them. Then you also have to ask, why, why would she have a house that don't even suit eight people? And I know this might piss some people off with regard to, you know, uh, single family homes. When you might have a mother and a father and three kids and you got three bedrooms, that's understandable to a point where maybe you might put one kid or two kids in another room. Where are you supposed to put eight kids at? You're supposed to put four of them in one bedroom? What if she only got a two bedroom house? Kids sleeping on the floor, kids sleeping on the couch, on cots and stuff, just, man. This is, I, I don't know. Like I said, man, I might get in trouble for saying this, but if you can't properly house your children, which is important, and thank y'all for the uh, super chats. I'm sorry I didn't read that earlier. So Patty Pierce, let me say thank you. Let me say thank you to Mookie Lolo, and let me say thank you, Natasha Hawkins. I'm sorry I didn't read that right when it came in. And also thank you to Gary. Gary with the T. If you're listening, thank you as well. But I think you should be able to properly house the kids. They should have beds. They should have rooms and privacy. I think we're just having too many kids, to be honest. I'm just being honest. That's not conducive to children. The family I met, just met a lot of them today. But, you know, at our school, we're all a family. So when one hurts, we all hurt. So me and Miss Alexander. You asked, why was DCF not notifi notified? They were. Let me read this again. They actually were. They received reports that the little girl hadn't been uh, been seen for some time. Where, where is this other thing at? She didn't even have custody of this kid. So it says, according to an arrest report, Bennett inflicted serious. Oh, let me let me skip that part. An arrest warrant for child abuse in March of 2020 says that she left another child alone for more than 24 hours and court records also show that in january of 2011 she was arrested for misdemeanor child abuse and she pled guilty lastly uh this last part let me see the girl's mother also has three pending misdemeanor child abuse charges from february of 2020 and then they turn around and go let this little girl stay with her in august of 2020 and then for a weekend and then she disappears and now we don't hear for about this story for nine months that makes absolutely no sense at all here today just to let them know that we're here i never know what people are going through um so i don't want to pass judgment or whatever but um just to Prayer for her, prayer for the extended family, prayer for her children, especially the one that we um, have close contact. This is why I wish they'd shut up.
Oh my God. Some of y'all going to get pissed off about this. We don't know what she was going through. I'm about to cut this stream off. She just said she, we don't know what the mom was going through. I don't care what she was going through. Don't have kids then. Men go through stuff. Does anybody care? They're like, no, man up. If we're going to talk about equality, why can't we have people like, like, why can't we set a standard and say everybody should meet or beat this standard? Why can't we do that in America? If you want to make America great again, how about we set some goddamn standards? How about that for a change? How about we say, here's the line. You must meet this or beat this. Not sit there and say, well, we don't know what she was going through, so we want to pray for her. She murdered her kid. She abused her kids. She had a shit ton of kids she couldn't provide for. She lost custody of the kids. What else does she, do, do y'all see what I'm saying? You see how people continue to keep making excuses? This is why I do what I do. And again, to remind y'all, this is not a news station. If you're listening, you're here to listen to my commentary. If you don't want to hear my commentary, I understand. I understand. This is not what this is. Most people are here to hear what my opinion is about these stories. Because you can go to listen to the news station. These videos get like two, three hundred thousand views. We get six, eight hundred people, maybe a thousand. We got like 974 right now. These people are here to hear my opinion about the story. Because most people already know that this happened. That is stupid to say she was going through something. So I'm going to murder my kid even though I didn't have custody of my kid. Even only had a, a weekend. What would be the point? What would be the point of that? It wasn't like you, you had this little girl in your possession and you didn't want to have her anymore. You didn't have custody of her. Why murder her? She was supposed to come see you. And go right back home. Come by real quick. Hi, mom. Bye, mom. And go right back home. But you know what? They're going to continue to say, we don't know what she was going through, y'all. Just to let them know that we're here. You never know what people are going through. Um, so I don't want to pass judgment or whatever. But um, just to prayer for her y'all need to pass judgment that's what's wrong with some of these christian folk stupid as hell we don't want to pass judgment i know the bible said we shouldn't judge which that's not actually what the bible says at all the bible said judge lest thou be judged meaning if you set a standard judge everybody by that standard which you'll be judged by that standard that don't mean I'm not going to have no opinion about it. That is not what that means. Y'all know how long I've taught Christian camp? I know what the hell I'm talking about. I've taught Christianity. I'm not going to judge y'all. That's why we're so messed up. Our prayer for the extended family, prayer for her children, especially the one that we um, have close contact with because she had been going through so much the last few weeks. We need to mention and also stress here that for now, this is a child death investigation. If I'm wrong about that Bible verse, Google it and let me know. It's judge lest thou be judged. Look it up and tell me what it means. He mourns one week after four-year-old Majelic Young was found dead, buried in her own mother's backyard. CMPD investigators. Somebody in the chat said, Tupac said, only God can judge me. And people run with that. Yeah, you're absolutely right but it's incorrect. It is incorrect. Judge lest thou be judged. Meaning when they say uh, who, who without sin can cast the first stone. All that means is if you're going to throw the stone, if you do the same shit, then be prepared to have stones thrown at your ass. Why don't we get these? These are simple allegories. I know I've heard Tommy talk about it before. I've talked about it for years now for what? Three years now. Somebody with the last name Israel said, you're on point. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, let's keep going. 
say the child's mother, Malik. Because we still got to talk about that 14 year old girl. Y'all going to get mad. Ooh, ooh y'all going to get mad about what I got to say about that. That 14 year old girl that left her baby in the restaurant with some strange ass lady. Did y'all hear about that? Bennett killed her in September of last year, buried her in the backyard. Then eight months later, detectives made that off. When they say don't throw stones if you live in a glass house, all it does is points the finger back at you. That's it. It's very simple. Why we make that stuff so complicated? We shouldn't judge. So why do we have judgment? Why do we have judges? Why do we send us people to jail if we don't judge? Why do we send us to people to death if we don't judge? Why do you spank your children if you don't judge? Oops. Full discovery. Majelic's grand. Why have punishment if you don't judge? Mother. Tammy Moffat also charged with concealing the death. This evening, it was about that adorable little girl at a candlelight vigil in West Charlotte. WCNC Charlotte's Hunter Signs was there and has the touching words from Majelic's sister. Friends tell me Majelic was just like any other little girl. She loved to laugh and she loved to play and she was loved by so many. And we saw that right here as hundreds came out to remember this little girl. Stop the balloon releases. Why are we still doing this? This is called air litter. <laughs> we matter of fact, I actually saw somebody post a video and thank you to whoever sent it to me. Somebody had showed a group of balloons like this that were falling from the sky and they came in and blew up a power line and the people on that block lost their power. This kills animals. It, it, uh, it, it, uh, litters people's property, litters trees, litters power lines. People got to clean this shit up. We release a thousand balloons. You're going to pay a tribute to somebody, light some damn candles, something you can clean up. My goodness. Beneath released balloons, a father sits like numb, mourning the loss of his four-year-old daughter, Majelic Young. Touch the heart of this dad. Touch the heart of this grandmother. Touch the heart of this family, Lord. Candles lit in her memory a week after her life burned out. So I got attached to Jelly. So many huh. overcome Everybody with emotions. The jelly was buried in our backyard. Majelic's sister so stepping up to the mic ahead. to prove. That's her sister. Oh my God, man. Oh man, wow. Prove she will always be her sister's keeper, reminding everyone Majelic is in a better place. Even though you don't have to be sad because Majelic will always be up there with God. That is so sweet. That is a sweet little baby. And I like what she said. I do. Wow. That's so sad. Hundreds turned That's out so to show their support, sad. wearing shirts showing an innocent. Somebody in the chat said my power went out for six hours due to a balloon release. All I could think about was DJ Just J. I'm just saying, guys. All you got to do is let me know if I'm wrong about something I've said. Thank you, said uh, Second Timothy, uh, Second Timothy, four, uh, one, and Romans two. Thank you for posting that in the chat. The Bible states only the righteous can judge. Post it in the chat if you feel like you know what you're talking about, because you're talking to somebody who's been in Christianity and in the church since I was born. I've been in leadership camp. I've been a counselor. So be mindful of what you post in my chat because I'm watching and I'm paying attention. So I hope you know what you're talking about. It's a child smile, shedding tears after tragedy, paying tribute to a little girl they called Jelly. So God's property, give them the, give them the, uh, the chapter and the verse. We'll look it up. I don't mind. This baby is sitting on God's lap reading the story many still wonder why and how it could have happened but no one questions the sweetness of a soul taken far too soon tell the candlelight vigil charlotte mother made her first appearance in court today accused of killing her four-year-old daughter and then burying her body in a yard 
Friday, detectives made a grisly discovery finding that child's body behind a home on Braden Drive. Fox 46's Jamal Goss spoke to family members still in shock about what happened. It's a struggle every day, but we continue to pray and um, have faith. It's unbearable for the family of four-year-old Majelic Young to think someone would hurt the little girl they call Jelly. This is very hurtful. You said, I'm in ministry and you're not supposed to judge. According to who? If you read your Bible, it don't say that in your Bible. What y'all do, you're talking about you're involved in ministry, you're listening to people. Here's where y'all are going wrong talking about you're in ministry. Because what you do is just like the rest of the congregation. You sit there and somebody tells you information, even though good pastors will tell you, don't believe my word, go look it up for yourself. And most of y'all won't go in the word and look it up yourself. The word tells you to judge by the standard that you judge. If you set a standard, that's the standard that you will be judged by. Why is that so hard? Judge lest thou be judged. It don't say don't judge. Like, let's let's move past that. Y'all are starting to make me upset. It's an innocent child. Police say her mother, Malika Bennett, killed her and then buried her in a shallow grave in the backyard of her home back in September. This case is, is deeply disturbing. It's disturbing to everyone who's worked it. Detectives say they discovered her remains last week after family members and neighbors say they hadn't seen her in months. It's even more difficult that this baby died at the hands of her mother, the person that gave her birth. Lucille Puckett is with the group and Take Back Our Hoods. Able. She lost her son to violence and is helping families like Majelix cope with losing a loved one. Fox 46 cameras weren't allowed inside the courtroom as Bennett faced a judge for murder, child abuse, and concealing a death. She sat emotionless as her bail was denied. She sat emotionless. Oh my goodness, that is so bothersome. Let me say thank you real quick. Anonymous exposes racism says, thank you AFC for exposing these horrific stories and people. Keep speaking that truth and dropping that knowledge. And Anonymous did it by way of a $100 super chat donations. So if you're listening, Anonymous exposes racism. Truly, truly, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, we, 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 we might have to have a show about that. Or maybe I'll let y'all call in after we finish. So if y'all want to debate my point about that, we'll actually go to the word and we'll look it up. But I'm telling y'all I know what I'm talking about. But don't believe me. Look it up in the word. Don't believe Jesus gal or anybody talking about they in the ministry. Look it up in the word. Because it ain't going to matter unless you look it up for yourself, right? Don't take my word for it. I ain't see no remorse. I ain't see no Sad face. No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! Family, friends, and loved ones rallied outside the Mecklenburg County Courthouse following Bennett's first court appearance, chanting no justice. Now, I do like this. I'm glad that the family stand out against her. That's, it's a good thing. Let me say that. That's a good thing. It's no peace. They shared memories of Majelic and had a moment of silence for her. Majelic had to have a lip gloss. Her lip gloss had to be popping. And if it wasn't, she was going in the pocketbook to get it. <laughs> they looked for this baby months. They asked this mother, where was she? And the mother gave no answer. Oh, she was with another family member. And the other family members asked him, where was Jelly? And they lied and said that they was with this family. And investigators are waiting on a medical exam to determine how Majelic was killed. Meantime, the family is hoping justice will be served. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I'm kind of curious about that. I'm going to assume that it was blunt force trauma, but she could have been stabbed. She could have been shot. She could have been anything. She could have been ran over with a car. We don't know. But I really would like to at least know her official cause of death. But if they gave her a murder charge, I'm sure they already know that. Right now, police are trying to figure out how a four-year-old's body ended up behind a Charlotte home. Fox 46's Jamal Goss is live on Caps Hill Mine Road. That's you said, is it the dad's side? Don't really know. That looks like that might be both sides of the family, but we really don't know. I don't know. Where a memorial continues to grow. Jamal, we know that police say the mother is now facing murder charges. Let me skip this. Now at 11 o'clock, and no matter how many times you hear this, this story is just gut-wrenching.
Another arrest today in the death of a four-year-old girl in Charlotte. Let me go ahead and skip these videos. Let me give y'all my closing thoughts because I want to talk about that uh, that 14-year-old girl, okay? So we're going to talk about that. Let me see. You said uh, Matthew 7 NIV. Do not judge or you too will be judged. Read that first sentence, Jesus gal. <laughs> you can't be serious. For in the same way you judge or others, you will be judged. And with the measures you use, it will be measured to judge you. So does that say don't judge? You wrote it perfect. Thank you. Jesus gal, please look at what you read. Look at what you wrote. <laughs> I'm going to read it again. Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way that you judge others, you will be judged with the measure you use. It will be measured against you. Is that not what I said? Judge lest thou be judged. We set the standard. If you're going to judge, you will be judged by that standard. Have some morals. Have some principle. Stand on your stand on your plateau, right? If you're gonna say this over here is right, this over here is wrong for this person, then it's going to be judged against you the same way. Do it righteously. Thank you. Yes. We're gonna have some church tonight, y'all. <laughs> We're going to have some church tonight, but look, I love all of y'all. I really do. And I'm glad we're having that discussion because to be honest, I've heard a lot of people say only God can judge me and it's not, it's not correct. It's not right. You shouldn't judge. It's not correct either. But so I'm glad we're having that conversation to clear that up. All right. Let me give y'all my closing thoughts about this story. As you guys can see, we actually have documents against this woman, man. They, they put out her documents and everything. But I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm perfectly okay with that, especially when you hurt, murder, and abuse children. She abused many of her children, and she also murdered one of her children. And this was so unnecessary. Now, I will say this. Sometimes things can be a blessing in disguise, and I hope nobody, and I hope the family doesn't take this the wrong way. This baby could have actually been the savior of seven other children so i'm going to assume jelly was number eight the one she's pregnant with is number nine so i'm going to assume that jelly might have saved her other seven siblings potentially eight with the mom with the one that mom is pregnant with because any and all of those children could have been murdered if they if she would have had access to them so i'm a numbers guy also so we lose one baby and save eight more. We lost one baby and we save eight more. So you could look at this kindred spirit. Let me go back, not her, but this baby. You could look at this kindred spirit, this beautiful soul, this precious princess who couldn't speak for herself, could not defend herself and should never have been around her mom who was a horrible person on record should have never been on a visit should have been nowhere around this woman this baby with that beautiful beautiful smile could have grown up to become anything and this baby was robbed of that opportunity but like i say sometimes when we look at these stories we can look at them as cautionary tales in order to make a difference in how we go about living our lives about how we go about judging people Yes, you see something, say something. That's also a judgment. We judge based on what we see. We make a phone call and we say, you know what? Hey guys, I think y'all might need to come do a welfare check over here. Something don't seem right. And it sucks that it's taken, what, eight to nine months for us just to get to this point. And on top of that, where they build these grandmas at? Where they build grandmas like this? Where do they build grandmas like this that help you hide a murder of your grandchild? A 31-year-old mother and a 53-year-old grandmother. Where do they make a grandmother out there like that? 
she's just like, you know what? I'm going to help you hide this murder. Absolutely ridiculous. And I'm going to tell you, for her hiding it, knowing about it and hiding it, I think she should get almost just as much time in prison. Give her life in prison. Why not? Why not? Because if you let grandma out early at any point in time, then she could potentially pose a risk to the rest of those other seven to eight children. They're done. These two individuals, done. Put Y'all can type that in the chat, done. D-O-N-E, done. Put them on a rocket ship, on an experimental rocket ship and launch them into outer space and let's see how long they last in outer space without any atmosphere. They should be done. We hope to get justice for this baby. Hashtag justice for jelly. And to that little baby, let me see if I can get a solo shot of her by herself. I don't even want her mother in the picture. This is probably my favorite picture of her. Young Princess Jelly R.I.P. Thank you so much for listening to this stream with an open mind and an open heart. And we thank you guys. And please make sure you like, share, subscribe. If there are any more updates, we're reported here on the channel. Thank y'all for listening. Leave a comment. And let me know what you guys think. Okay. Peace. All right. How many of you guys want to hear the story of the 14 year old girl who just freshly gave birth and took her baby to a freaking, uh, I don't know, I guess a restaurant and dropped her baby off with a stranger. How many of y'all heard about that story? Matter of fact, I think I need to say thank you to Sassy uh, Vermont Mom. Are you out there? Where's Sassy Vermont Mom? I think she emailed me this. But y'all know if one person emails me this, a lot of people will probably email me the same stories because these things make their rounds and it is insane. So I'm going to tell y'all the difference between what you see in this video because you can go anywhere on YouTube and see this video, but I don't think you're going to hear I think, I think my commentary on this story is going to be unique. Let me say that. So do me a favor real quick. Let me. Give me a moment. Let me see. Can I take this off of here? Let me see if I could uh, drop this in here real quick. Hold on just a second, guys. How long is this? Y'all show some love to our sponsors real quick. Give me just a moment. North Authentic Designer has some of the most glamorous and stylish handbags your girl has ever seen. So ladies, if you wanna get fly, and fellas, if you wanna take care of your lady, please be sure to go to www.norris915.com. www.norris915.com That's right, www.norris915.com Hello listeners, come mask up with Keyline Designs where you reap what we sow. We offer essential handcrafted face masks made with 100% cotton, equipped with a built-in filter and a slot for refillable filters. Our masks have many uses like riding motorcycles, ATVs, while out in public places, outside exercising, lawn and gardening, and helps prevent the spread of germs. We offer bling, sports logos, monograms, many assorted fabrics and colors. We make child size masks starting at the age of two. Come join us today for the launch of our new website at keylinedesigns.com. Please be sure to like and follow our page on Facebook. Our links can be found in the description box of this video. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing started here. Uh, where are my... There we go. Let's talk about this. Let me get my story pulled up. Okay, some of y'all say, oh, you say you love my channel. Thank you very much, and I appreciate that. And um, 
According to what you were saying, who was who was my uh my Bible girl in there? Um who was that in there earlier? Said we were both right. I forgot her name. What was her name? Jesus Gal. Uh no disrespect, ma'am, but I wasn't saying that we were both right. I'm saying I'm right. <laughs> and I don't mean any disrespect. But I will I, I can have you call in if you want to. And we can actually have that discussion if you actually want to debate my point about that, which I thought was a very simple point. So just to let you know, <laughs> let me say thank you to Joan with the P said, thank you for all, all your hard work. Thank you very much again. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Dominique. They said a uh, PayPal's through. So I'm going to thank y'all real quick. If I don't know if something's wrong with my cash app, but I don't, think anybody sent any oh yes they did wow oh where's dre the dream at i'm sorry they just showed up it didn't notify me but they're here now i do see your cash app i'm sorry about that if my brother dre the dream is listening i did get your cash app so if you're listening bro thank you very much dre the dream it just came in to valentine if you are listening i just got yours said thank you for what you do thank you very much this comes from, said for helping the babies, Crystal with an S. Crystal with an S. So I'll keep part of your name private. This is my first night on your channel. Thank you, Tiffany. Tiffany with an A in the chat. Thank you. And also, I want to say thank you to, said all the grandmas who love their grandchildren, donated, showing love. That is Cynthia with a C. Cynthia with a C in Cash App. Those are the Cash Apps. And my cash app, apparently the app needs to update because it is not notify me. We had one, two, three, four come in and they didn't go off at all. So I'm sorry about that. I don't know why I did that. I'm sorry about that. Thank you, Dre. They just need to update it. That's all. But when you was like, when you was like, did I see it? I was like, I was waiting on it to come through. But no, I, but I did get it though. So thank you, Dre and all of the rest of you guys. Let's talk about this story real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you guys and be really honest. This story has a lot of details that are not going to sit well with your sensibilities. Not only because of what happened, because I'm actually going to show you guys, um, I think the full video as well as the news video. But my commentary, and I got to say thank you to those who emailed me this story. And I remember I responded to one person and I told them, I'm like, look, if you want to hear my honest opinion about this story, I'm going to tell you. I know what you might want me to say, but I'm always going to say what I feel like is the right thing. Because I'm going to say something that might not sit well with some of y'all sensibilities. This might not be the channel for you if you came to hear the news. This isn't the news that I'd like to say thank you for those who decided to subscribe and everybody who understands that this is not the news. I'm here to give my commentary about this 14 year old girl who recently gave birth to a baby. And I'm gonna tell you, it is so much wrong with this story. Let's just deal with that first sentence. Sentence number one. A 14-year-old girl who just gave birth. I'm going to say it again. A 14-year-old girl who just gave birth. Okay? Let me say this real quick. If y'all would, if y'all haven't already done so, thank you, A-N-D-O-G-T-V. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Let me see. Is it Andog and, and TV? Or Andog? Andog? But thank you for subscribing. Thank you to all who just subscribed. So I appreciate that. If y'all would, please click that thumbs up. We are at 628. We're at what I asked for. So if we can bring in a few more people, let's try to see if we can get to 700 thumbs up. You're actually asking what I want to know, Miss June. Thank you. And Lee, thank you, Lee. First of all, why is a 14-year-old girl pregnant? That's the first question I would ask. Where are her parents? Why is she pregnant? I know you can't watch your children's every single waking move, but I think a diligent parent would be good enough to be able to make sure that this type of thing doesn't happen. Let me explain. 
This is a 14 year old girl. Let me let me back the picture up real quick. That's her face blurred out, but that's the 14 year old girl. Well, we can call her a girl or we can call her a mother. Which one do y'all want to which one do y'all want to call her? Do y'all want to call her a mother or do y'all want to call her a girl? Because what that girl did was made a grown woman choice and chose to become a mother. The same thing as if a boy went out and had a baby. He's no longer a boy at 14. He'd be a father. Okay? We could debate those intricacies, but that's literally what it is. As a parent, I have a third. Matter of fact, my daughter's actually getting ready to turn 14 in just a few months. So I'm literally old enough to be this 14 year old mother's dad. That's what's scary to me. I don't understand how you get to this point and where are the parents that is so vital and so crucial. And the fact that I haven't seen an interview come out from the parents yet, why they haven't spoke out. Are they scared? Does she have any parents? Does she live on her own? Does she run away? What who did you have sex with at 14 years old? Somebody brought up Brenda's got a baby, but Brenda's barely got a brain. A damn shame. The girl can barely spell a name. She's just too young to end up in this situation. And let me also say this. For those who actually take the time to educate their children, we haven't even got to the story yet. That's how crazy this is. For those who take time to educate their children, shouldn't most teenagers, as girls, have a semblance of knowledge of to not have sex, what it is to be taken advantage of, which we would call that rape, number three, condoms, number four, birth control, day after pills, potentially abortion if we have to use that as an option it's an option so why can't we talk about it if if abortion is so bad why do we still have it as an option on the table huh but we'll, we'll get to that we might be gun jumping but we'll get we'll get back to that a 14 year old girl who just gave birth this girl walked into a restaurant let me see if i can get that restaurant back up on the screen it is called cafe l Patron restaurant. Y'all bear with me just a moment. What up, Pops? No, you want me to send you the link to it? We live. <laughs> okay. 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 But, but do do you feel do you feel okay? Okay. All right, well. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh I'm gonna send you a link to the stream anyway, but we're going we're going to put a prayer hands up in the chat for you um and uh and and pray for you and hope everything is okay over there. But but I appreciate you giving me a giving me an update. All right, Daddy, love you, man. Okay. All right, bye. Okay, that was my dad, guys. I I don't want to give too much uh, information, but I will say this: if y'all would just keep my dad in your prayers. Um, not feeling good right now, but my daddy is my daddy is my Superman. Let me say that, and let me say it again. My father is my Superman. You know how they talk about give people their flowers while they're here? Everybody should do that. Everybody should do that. Let me send him a link to the stream real quick because I know he's uh, he's laying up right now, resting up. So hopefully he gets to feeling better. But yeah, if y'all would, just put a prayer hands up in the chat. So um, I think if he watches, if he looks at this stream, he might actually see y'all comments in there. So shout out to my dad, but my dad is my Superman. And I'm going to tell y'all, he don't always agree with everything that I say, but I'm glad that me and my father have such a great understanding. And, um, and we just have a great relationship now because one thing that my mom helped me, helped me with was uh, when she told me that y'all butt heads so much because y'all are so similar. And I was like, really? 
But the more I started to realize how similar we are, the better our relationship got. And I got to tell you, I mean, you know, just the fact that my dad called me, I told him, I said, if you call me, I'm going to pause my stream and I'm going to talk to you. Absolutely. But shout out to my dad, man, for real. And shout out to all of you guys in the chat. Y'all show, show, uh, daddy, 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 just Jay some love in the chat. <laughs> show my pop some love in the chat. But yeah, put a prayer hands up and we hope he gets to feeling better. Like for real, for real. Okay. All right, let's get back to this story real quick. So she walked into the El Patron restaurant in New Jersey and gave her newborn baby to a customer before she just walked out. The incident took place at around 4 p.m. on Wednesday, and this looks like this took place uh, less than a week ago, actually. The restaurant owner, Frankie, Frankie Avalar, told Penn Live that the teenager walked into El Patron restaurant looking a little bit desperate while holding a newborn baby in her arms. The restaurant owner said that the 14-year-old girl then started asking customers and the staff for help, prompting employees to call the, the local police department who they thought could assist the girl, which again is weird why is she walking around? How did we get to this point? Why did you think a restaurant would help you? Do you not? Like, I thought we taught children as kids to call 911. Am I wrong about this? My two-year-old daughter knew what 911 was. Why would we not call for help? Do we not know about safe haven? I just so much wrong with this anyway. But so instead of walking to a hospital, she walked to a restaurant before police arrived at the restaurant, the teenager handed the baby, which still had the umbilical cord attached. Oh my goodness. And handed it to a customer by the name of Elise Scott. And she quickly left the restaurant. So if y'all want to, No medical attention. Where does she have this? Is, uh, I'm going to say some stuff that's going to make y'all mad at me. She's more worried about her hair than the baby. Do y'all think I'm lying? Look at this. That's why I said, unless y'all want me to do the story, I'm going to be honest. Honesty is the policy, right? So if DJ Just J is going to be honest, then I have to call out what I see is wrong. Here they are, right here. Look at what's on her head. There's the baby right there. And that customer, Elise, is right here. She eventually picks up the baby, and then they come over here. And she sits down at the table. I just don't understand the mentality here that you're more worried about your hair than you are a baby. And if you just had a newborn baby, how are you able to walk around? I've never given childbirth. I don't know what that's like to squeeze a human child out of my body, but I've seen it happen. Shout out to my daughter's mama. I've watched it happen. I watched how my daughter's mother was in pain and, and she actually had, um, she had pain inhibitors and she was still in pain. So as a 14 year old, you're not even a fully developed woman yet. You give birth and you're able to walk around. What did you, uh, what did you do? Damn. Just gave birth and started walking around. I mean, I'm just like, I don't get it. That seems like that would hurt. Like you'd be in pain. Like, how would you be able to walk around? Why would you not call 911? But let's move on. Scott, who was eating in the restaurant with her boyfriend by the name of Walter. I don't know why they put their full names in here, but they did. Walter. Kaka 
It's spelled C-O-C-C-A. If I pronounce that wrong, bro, I'm sorry. When the incident took place and they told the news that she asked the 14-year-old if she could check the newborn's vitals. She said the girl readily handed the baby over to me, so my focus went right onto the baby as the teenager then just walked out of the restaurant. Now, I know a lot of y'all wanted to have all this sympathy for this 14-year-old, but I want to hold you, I want y'all to hold y'all mule on y'all judgment until you hear the rest of the story. Scott, who was a who was trained in CPR, so this woman literally got lucky. Elise Scott is trained in CPR. She got so lucky that this woman was trained in CPR, said that she could tell that the baby was having trouble breathing and told the police who responded with oxygen and other medical gear. She said, once I applied the oxygen mask to the baby, all of a sudden we heard the most beautiful cry and the baby started moving. She slightly opened up her eyes and then closed her eyes. But the sweetest thing is that she got hungry and when she tried to suckle on the oxygen mask, we knew that the baby was okay. And that's a beautiful thing. I'm just so happy I was there to help because she was desperate and didn't know what to do because she was so young. I'm going to read that again and I want y'all to underline that point because we're going to come back and talk about it. She said she was desperate and didn't know what to do. She was so young. Can y'all remember that? Bookmark that because we're going to come back to it. When you're talking about young, shouldn't you go to your parents for that? Mom, dad, uncle, grandma, grandpa, somebody, 911, the fire station. Hell, you could have called Ghostbusters and you could have had a better chance of getting some freaking help. Come on, man. Young, that's 14 years old. Should I be mad about my daughter not being responsible with her with her uh her debit card balance? <laughs> I'm like, girl, you better balance that that uh that that uh account on there and know how much money you got in there. Shoot. At 13 years old. Anyway, the 14 year old was found by police later in the day and was taken to New Jersey to the uh, the Jersey City Medical Center after being detained for a short period of time. She will not face charges. I repeat, she will not face charges and the baby will be put up for adoption. What a hell of a way to start life. New Jersey has safe haven laws in place. And let me say thank you to Miss June Bennett, who has been posting that link in the chat for I don't know how long. New Jersey has safe haven laws in place, which allow the parent of a baby to drop off an infant who was less than 30 days old to staff at a hospital, police station, fire station, or first aid employee if they aren't able to parent the baby. So I think she might have got lucky because she gave the baby to somebody who was trained in first response. She got lucky very lucky now prior to the incident on wednesday new jersey department of children and family services tweeted about the law confirming that the process can be anonymous if you're stressed and you feel like you have nowhere to turn or if you've run out of options don't panic linking the drop and they uh they they tweeted that linking the to the drop-off locations in the state and I think that's it. But let me show you guys the video because I'm sure that's what most of y'all came to see. Let me give you guys the fair usage. And I want to just know what y'all think. So leave your comments in the comment section. Or if the video is over, leave your comments in the comment sections because I want to see what you guys got to say. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. All right, and if you guys are listening, do me a favor and click that thumbs up. And again, thank y'all for showing my dad some love, man. So I'm hoping he gets the feeling better here really really quick we got 1,000 people in the building so we're doing really good if y'all would try to get us to 700 thumbs up we only need 21 more people to do it click that thumbs up only need 21 more people all right here we go let's get it 
A teenager desperate for help leaves her baby in the hands of strangers. It happened at a restaurant in Jersey City this week. And as CBS 2's Kevin Rincon reports, it was all caught on camera. Not sure where to go or what to do, this 14-year-old girl decided to go into this restaurant. Seen here going to the counter with a sense of desperation. She looks at me with these like really sad, terrified eyes, and she asked me for help. That's when Elise Scott got up, sanitized her hands, and stepped in. I sat down, I checked the baby's vitals, the heart rate was strong, but the breathing was really labored. As she was helping the teenage mom, left. Luckily for Scott, she's had training in CPR and first aid, not to mention she herself is a mother of three. I was just so happy once I got the oxygen mask onto the baby and she started to cry because that meant that, you know, she was going to be okay. And I want y'all to remember, this is a random guess. That 14 year old had no idea. I think that's just divine intervention. Purely. This, that girl had no idea, or I should say that mother, had no idea that that woman was trained in first aid. Mom left. Luckily for... And just left. I don't, I just don't get it, man. Breathing was really labored. As she was helping the teenage mom, left. Luckily for Scott, she's had training in CPR and first aid. Not to mention she herself is a mother of three. I was just so happy once I got the oxygen mask onto the baby and she started to cry because that meant that, you know, she was going to be okay. Scott's boyfriend, Walter, abandoned as a baby himself, was emotional. Wow. This is, whoa. She's crying. Oh, you're hungry. Oh, my goodness. He captured the moment that newborn could be heard crying. Here at El Patron, the teamwork of a restaurant owner and a customer that's created a special bond, knowing they helped save a life. There's been so many incidents where she could have put the baby in a trash can or left the baby with a, a stranger that would have done some harm to the baby. And for that, for what she just said, I do agree. And it is a good thing that she didn't harm the baby. That's, let's just say not even a good thing. It's just a positive thing and something that could have been very bad. But they're very, very many bad things but a positive thing for that baby okay he did the best thing she could do under the circumstances you could have left the baby anywhere he couldn't even be alive but instead she allowed the baby to have a second chance with at least somebody police were able to catch up with that 14 year old girl she was taken to the hospital she will not be charged that's because of the state's safe haven law which allows parents with babies up to 30 days after they're born to drop them off safely at a hospital police station or firehouse in jersey city kevin firehouse and also they said um with a first care person i believe let me see if i can look that up one more time let me make sure or a first aid employee. That's actually four. She got lucky. Anyway, let me give my closing thoughts about this story. First of all, beautiful baby. This ended in a positive fashion. That's good. We can put a prayer hands up for that. At the end of the day, we have saved a life. Beautiful thing. Somebody saw something, said something, did something, jumped into action. Beautiful thing. Bravo, bravo to both of them. To her, she could have handed the baby over to the guy, but she handed the baby over and got really lucky that this woman did have some type of medical training. So that was a beautiful thing. Okay. Second thing we have to talk about is how this 14 year old girl slash mother got into this situation to begin with. Who was she having sex with? Was it somebody that was an adult? Was this rape? Was this consensual? Was it somebody her own age? Because I'm assuming she didn't impregnate herself. So who the father is is also important. And so I'm sure that story is going to come out. That's going to be a whole nother story in itself. Then you'd have to ask yourself, where in the world are the parents? Like where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Where are this 14 year old girl's parents? Mom? dad anybody nothing nobody knew anything did nobody know that she was pregnant how did they not know that she was pregnant how did she have time between 
school and should be at home getting pregnant when where what why who it's just so much we don't know and i'm sure that story will come out and it'll give us a hell of a lot more clarity but the fact that she was able to just mob around after giving birth i mean that is that is a traumatic thing to happen to your body and just to be able to just walk around ain't like nothing going on with your with your hair bonnet on and here take this baby i'm gonna stand there and look for a moment and then i'm gonna just walk off it's just a very weird and unsettling thing this is the story we're gonna follow but i think that's a that's a good woman she seems like a very sweet woman i really like her demeanor a lot so if that man is her boyfriend why because he kept saying friend i don't really know what that means even though on the website newsweek.com said boyfriend uh in this freaking thing referred to him as a boyfriend eating eating at the restaurant with her boyfriend walter i don't know but i will say this she seems like a good woman i heard she got three kids but nonetheless i don't know if that's the kids by him i don't know but she seems like a sweet woman it's it's a good thing it's a positive thing I'm glad that she did have some medical training because clearly it paid off. And um, it's just a lot of unanswered questions. And if we do an update, it will be to provide the answers to those questions, okay? Thank y'all for listening with an open mind and an open heart. And we hope to get, like I said, justice for that baby because that baby is going to need good parents. And we need answers in order to get to the justice of figuring out what happened in this story, how we got to this point in order to do what's best by that girl slash mother and the baby, okay? This is DJ Just J. We are the AFC and we put the children first, all right? Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Hit that thumbs up. Leave a comment. If y'all disagree with something I said, leave a comment. We'll talk about it in the chat. See y'all on the next story, okay? Peace. Thank y'all so much for bearing with me. We had just over a thousand people tonight and I'm absolutely honored and thrilled about that i want that to be kind of normal as we continue to build and maybe we could do better than that going forward but we want to keep bringing you guys stories that matter and giving you commentary that makes a difference okay thank y'all so much let's show some love to our sponsors while we get up out of here let me take these off here real quick because that'll help me out next time around take this one off boom and y'all show our sponsors some love and y'all have a great night. Peace. North Authentic Designer has some of the most glamorous and stylish handbags your girl has ever seen. So ladies, if you want to get fly, and fellas, if you want to take care of your lady, please be sure to go to www.norris915.com. www.norris915.com That's right, www.norris915.com Exclusive new products that you will only see on my website at www.sayitwithchess.com These products are made special by my mother, Keyline Designs. The hoodie blankie, the face mask, as well as the four-in-one African head wrap. Now, the way it works, it is a reversible bonnet. It has a headband that you can wear alone. It has a matching face mask as well. Please be sure to go over to our website and check out these nice new products that you will not find anywhere else.